Hey guys, it's Amber from Notable Ink. Today I am sharing some watercolor freehand sweet treats. These shapes are so simple to make and you definitely have to give them a try. They were just so fun. This video is part of a collaboration with my crafty friend Katya from Cali9 Designs and we chose a summer theme to brighten your day. Be sure to follow the links down below to check out her projects. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to use the Altenew Artist watercolor set and this has 24 colors. I love the colors because they're super pigmented and I'm familiar with the colors because they coordinate with all of the Altenew inks. As always, I'll have all of the supplies that I use listed down below. You're going to want two jars of water so that you keep one jar clean. So clean your brush in one jar and then rinse it off in the clean water in the next jar. So I'm just putting down a popsicle shaped kind of area of clean clear water because I want to do a wet on wet technique. I want to get those pigments moving. I'm going to use cherry blossom and red sunset for my reds and I'm just going to start off with the most pigment at the top. That's all I'm going to add and then I'm going to rinse off my brush and use that clean clear water to draw that pigment out. I want this to have kind of a soft appearance. And then I also want to add a green rind to the bottom of this so that it looks like a watermelon. I'm using Saunders Waterford High White, and this is either the cold press or the rough paper. I'm not really sure. There's quite a bit of texture on the paper, so it's one or the other. For the green rind on the watermelon, I mixed together green hills and green meadows. And you can see that I put a little too much in the corner there. And you want to work with your green sparingly. I didn't want the red and the green to mix too much and make brown. And so I just blotted that up with a paper towel and I'm gonna do that a couple times before I get it just right. So I just wanted to add the green down at the base and then let it kind of bleed out into that white area in between the red and the green to create that white flesh that you see in between the rind and the pink flesh on the watermelon. Next up, we need to do some of those indentations that you see on the popsicles. And so I've watered down that mixture of pink that I used, super watered down, and I'm just gonna rough that in so it's not really clean, clear water that I'm using, it's just a watered down version of that. And then I'm going to slowly add just a little bit more pigment. And I was a little bit perplexed as to what to do in the area because you can see that these little indentations extend down into the area that's white and I wasn't entirely sure how to manage that so you can see that I stopped short of that area and I kind of just go back to the top and so a lot of times that's what I'll do if I'm not sure about something I'll kind of ignore it and then come back to it later you don't want to leave it too long because then your paint is going to dry and you're not going to be able to move it around now this paper is amazing you guys i absolutely love this watercolor paper because the pigments move so well now you can see i decided to use just a super watered down version of the green paint to add just a little bit to the bottom there and then i'll just let it dry to see how far that color is going to dry back for the popsicle stick i'm going to use fall harvest delectable delights and rock collection and just do a mixture of those you can see that I don't mix all of my paints together. I kind of mix them next to each other because I wanna pick up different parts of those pigments and add a little bit of color here, a little bit of color there. I like to have the color variation on the page versus a solid mixture of a color. So that's kind of how I do it. There's so many different ways to do it and there's not really a right or a wrong way. So same thing, I painted the popsicle stick with clean water and then dropped in the pigments. I'm gonna set that aside to dry while I work on the ice cream cone. And so with clean, clear water, I'm just sketching out what I want that ice cream scoop to look like. And I'm just gonna use one scoop, but I'm gonna do different colors in that scoop. So I'm gonna add the same pinks to the top, and then I'm gonna mix some blues. What I really wanted to do, you guys, was a bomb pop, but I wasn't sure that I would get the angles and the perspectives right. And so I decided to go with the same colors, but in ice cream, because those shapes are so forgiving. So I've used deep blue seas and lapis lazuli and crystal water for the blues. So for this, I'm almost more like dotting the texture and the pigment in because I want it to have kind of like those rough edges that ice cream has. I'm kind of pushing out some of the edges so that it's not a clean scoop. 
and then I'm going to tilt the, car the watercolor paper so that those two colors bleed together but leave white in the center because I wanted all three colors, the red, white, and blue. Now I needed my popsicle to dry before I could add the seeds and for the seeds I'm just using the rock collection which is a super dark gray. Here you can see it's so pigmented that it does look um, black. Now the paper wasn't dry enough in some of the, the areas so that you can see some of the seeds bled out. Totally okay, I don't mind that at all. Here to draw my triangle for the cone, I just put a dot at the bottom and I'm gonna join those. And then I'm adding in some water stripes here. I want to make sure that I leave some white space in between some of these lines of pigment. So I'm gonna go over that with that same brown. I've watered that brown down a little bit and then I'll do some brown stripes here. For me, this was the easiest method to make sure that I was going to leave some of that white space. So once I have this down, I know it doesn't look good, but I'll go back in and kind of reinforce some of those areas. So a lot of that white space is going to go away, especially over on the right side of the cone, but that's okay. As long as you have a couple of them and you have the suggestion of that cone texture, you're good to go. It doesn't need to be perfect. You can see that nothing of these popsicles in the ice cream are perfect. Now you can see that the brown is bleeding up into my ice cream there. I don't like that at all. And so after adding some color variation to the cone, I'll go back up and I'll fix that. So I'll show you how that's done. So you're just gonna wanna grab your paper towel and blot up that paint. So anywhere it mixes, you don't like it, just blot it up with a paper towel. And then I'm gonna add some more blue here now. Because the paint underneath is mostly dry, this is going to add a lot of texture to this ice cream cone. So it was a happy accident because that blue that I added is going to have some hard edges to it when it dries. So it's gonna look like another layer of texture there, which will be perfect. Now, while this is still wet, I decided that I wanted to blow out some of these areas. And I did let this dry probably a little too long before doing this, especially the cone part, or I'm sorry, especially the ice cream part. The cone was still a little more wet than the ice cream was. Here you can see because that ice cream is dry, I'm gonna have to work at this a little bit more. So I'm coming in with the clean clear water and adding an area of clean clear water where the pigments can bleed out into. That's the first step. Then you touch your pigment and it'll start to bleed out. For the blue, I think I actually had, it, had to add a little bit more paint to get it to bleed. So here you can see I started with the with the clean clear water and you see how that I added that blue just to get a little bit more pigment out on the page. So this step is totally optional. You don't have to do it. I think it just adds a nice artistic effect to it. While I play around with these blowouts and kind of go between adding water and adding pigment, I'll talk a little bit more about Katya and her channel. If you haven't been over there, do check her out. She shares a lot of card making hack videos also some alcohol ink videos. She's also a woodworker. Not too many of those videos on there, but she has an extensive creative background and hobbies that she likes to do. For instance, she designs 3D layering dies that she cuts out with her scan and cut or your electric cutter, which is also really cool. She's got some really unique designs. So check her out. So I'm still playing around with these blowouts and like I said, this is much easier if your paint is still wet when you start this. You really just have to leave it alone like that red one up at the top. There has to be enough water on your page for it to travel out and then just leave it alone. So I added some blue splatter to this one. I'll add some pink splatter to the popsicle and you can see that my popsicle is totally not centered. So what I decided to do was trim them down with a die. Then I'm gonna use the a Love for Stripes Set C Paper Pack from Ulta New. And because they're papers, inks, markers, all of the things color coordinate, that's super easy. I'm gonna put some sticky back fun foam on the back of the watercolor panels to pop them up. And that works twofold. It keeps the watercolor panel flat and it also pops it up, gives it some dimension. Though I have to tell you, this paper does not really warp too much and it's another reason I love to work with it. And here I'm just gonna use my score buddy to make sure I get the edges of these papers lined up perfectly without any effort. And then I'll just take it to my trimmer to trim off the excess. 
Here's a close up of the ice cream card so you can see those blown out areas, which I think turned out pretty cool in the end. These sentiments are from Altenew Stone Mosaic stamp set, and I especially love the one on this popsicle card, which reads, just knowing you makes me cool. So those are my summer cards today. Do check out more inspiration over on Katya's YouTube channel and blog and Instagram account. I'll have links to all of that down below. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, liking, and ringing that bell so you don't miss any new inspiration. Here's a couple more videos for you before you leave, and I'll see you real soon.